there's very healthy people that do have high LDL cholesterol, but they're being scared by their doctor into taking a medication, even though they're doing all these other things right. And again, you know, this study, and they highlight five related recently published studies highlighting that in asthmatic patients specifically, and also non-asthmatic patients, higher LDL cholesterol levels were linked with lower odds of dying over the course of a five-year study. You know, if in fact LDL is the sine qua non of cardiovascular disease and, and mortality, shouldn't we see the opposite? But we, we don't. So for the past 60 years, we've been told that high LDL cholesterol levels are problematic. They're linked with heart disease, sudden cardiac death, and lower odds of surviving and living a long, healthy life. But over the past several years, there's been a lot of studies that are conflicting with this mainstream narrative that we've been told for the better part of 60 years. And a recently published study that I think is incredibly fascinating, and we're gonna, I would like to share this with you today, found that high LDL or bad cholesterol levels were linked with greater odds of surviving or avoiding death over the course of a five-year follow-up period over a study using the NHANES data set. I don't know if you've heard about this, but this is the National Health and Nutrition Examination Survey. It's a large epidemiological study where individuals are asked different questions about their pre-existing health conditions, their diet, and I think this study is interesting because they looked at fat intake and found that the individuals who survived over the course of this five-year study ate more fat compared to the people who died. We can also talk about relationship status and their LDL cholesterol levels and other factors in a moment. But these studies keep coming up, and I think they raise more questions than answers when it comes to the correlation with high LDL cholesterol levels and as it's associated with mortality, death, and also heart disease. So my parents get blood work done, and it comes back. They have high cholesterol. Their doctor wants to put them on. A statin, right. right. I think it's a great question. And honestly, several studies over the past few years, in my opinion, raise more questions than answers because we've been told for the past 60 years that LDL cholesterol or the so-called bad cholesterol, this is what doctors are trying to lower with lipid lowering medications, are unequivocally linked with the onset of heart disease and are linked with early cause mortality or death. But let's talk about a recently published study, and then I think that will help us better understand the nuances when it comes to cholesterol. And this study was just published in asthmatic subjects, but they also included in the supplementary materials cholesterol levels and death in non-asthmatics. And I want to focus on both of those because I think it's really important. What they found in this study is high LDL cholesterol levels in, as, in asthmatics. And they tracked these uh, people that had asthma, 3,000 of them. Their median age was 45 years of age, right? Um, they tracked them for almost 60 months, so five years. And they found that higher LDL cholesterol levels at the start of the study were linked with lower odds of dying. And statistically speaking, what they found is that there was a 17% reduction in death for every one milligram per deciliter increase in their LDL cholesterol levels. So again, I think this conversation is a lot more nuanced. You know, should you lower your LDL cholesterol levels if they are high when you visit your primary health professional? You know, we have really good data to show that LDL cholesterol, it's not just there to cause atherosclerosis or the, or the, the plaque buildup in your arteries. It's involved in other bio, biologic functions, delivering fat soluble nutrients to your cells. And most importantly, and I think it's relative to this study in 3000 asthmatic patients or individuals, is LDL cholesterol has anti-inflammatory and immune supportive effects. It can neutralize uh, pathogens, virus, as well as bacteria. And we actually have data from COVID-19 patients that lower LDL cholesterol levels were linked with higher odds of death in the hospital. So I think the question that you brought up, which is eloquent, if you have high LDL cholesterol levels, should you be concerned? I really think it's there's a lot more nuance and context that needs to be discussed that is not being presented or uh, taught to primary health professionals. They're just taught about a hypothesis that has been emerging known as a cumulative LDL exposure hypothesis, where they're relating LDL to smoking. The more you smoke, the more the higher your odds of dying from cardiovascular disease and cancers and so forth. And so the thinking is that, well, the more LDL or bad cholesterol that your body's exposed to, that is directly proportional to the, the percentage of plaque buildup that you will have. And therefore that will increase your risk of cardiovascular disease. But again, this study is really fascinating because what it found is there was an inverse association in both asthmatics 
as well as non as non asthmatics, people that don't have asthma, with LDL cholesterol levels and risk of death. And so I think the conversation is a lot more nuanced. And we're ignoring when we use pharmacotherapy to lower people's LDL, you know, we're kind of ignoring the other benefits that LDL offers in the body, the anti inflammatory benefits, potentially the immune supportive benefits and neutralizing bacterial inflammogens such as endotoxin because if your cholesterol and triglyceride levels are high probably from insulin resistance and obesity and sedentary activity and all that it's probably because you're eating processed junk food and processed junk food can cause intestinal permeability and leakage of what's known as bacterial endotoxin so we've heard of sepsis and septic shock we've all heard about this when people get you know laceration in the stomach they get shot they need to go to the ER because their stomach is leaking intestinal contents into the body, okay? And that sounds gross, but that happens every time we eat fast food. You get low-grade sepsis. It's called metabolic endotoxemia. And it turns out that LDL cholesterol helps to bind those bacterial inflammogens that are coming through the gastrointestinal tract. That's just one of many properties that LDL offers. So this idea that lower LDL cholesterol is always better is not necessarily corroborated by research. And this paper that was just published highlighted five recently published studies that find there's J-shaped associations, meaning there's like, you know, a, a certain threshold where, um, you know, low LDL is actually not so helpful, but also extremely high LDL is not so helpful. So again, this idea that every single person must lower their LDL cholesterol, irrespective of their diet, their health history and all this, I think, it requires a more nuanced conversation. And let's look at this table one and talk about this because this is incredibly fascinating where they found, they looked at different aspects of these people's lifestyle and wanted to correlate that or, or see if there was any statistical associations with these nutrition lifestyle and relationship statuses. And I just think it's worthy of, of talking about since we're talking about avoiding death really. And they found that married people in this analysis were more likely to survive compared to the people who were unmarried. So I think that's interesting. Same goes true with uh, people that were in a relationship versus not and people who were living with a partner. People that were living with a partner were less likely to die statistically compared to people who actually died. They, they were more... Well, not really from high cholesterol, just over, just statistically. Yeah, this was, was one factor that was associated with mortality. Okay. So I think that's interesting, you know, because it brings in other aspects of it, mental health, you know, feelings of being connected, talking with a partner, you know, communicating, um, social well-being is linked with mental well-being. So when we think about the heart, what's interesting is there's more messages being sent from the heart to the brain than vice versa. We think about heartache and troubles like emotional troubles. Um, the heart communicates so much to the brain. So if you are depressed or anxious and lonely, that can predispose you to increased rates of heart disease. So I think that's fascinating. But fat intake, because dietary fat has been vilified, as you know, for the past six years. I mean, you look at cereal at grocery stores, it says low fat, heart healthy. Cheerios at Costco has a big heart healthy and signature as does Wheaties. I mean, there's granola bars that have all these labels on them supported or endorsed by the American Heart Association, right? Because they're low fat. But if you look at this study, you know, the group that died ate significantly lower fat over the course of this five-year period compared to the people who ate more fat, which again, these, this flies in the, it completely conflicts with mainstream recommendations. You know, higher LDL cholesterol levels were linked with lower odds of death. You can see in the study, you know, the individuals that lived ate more dietary fat compared to the people who died. And if you look at also smoking status, there were a lot more smokers in the group that died. That's not surprising. Higher blood pressure. So again, there's all these other factors. Glycemic control. As you know, hemoglobin-A1C represents your 90-day glucose average. The people who died in this cohort of 3,000 people over the course of 60 months or five years, um, they were mu they had significantly higher levels of hemoglobin A1C. So the whole thing that these, I, I think the main point here is that we should be focusing on not just one biomarker. You know, that's just that seems to be a little bit reductionistic, and we should be looking at other aspects of people's life and other biomarkers, glucose, relationship status, you know, all these uh, different factors, and and most importantly, in my opinion, metabolic health because. Most of the people that have high cholesterol and lipids have underlying metabolic dysfunction. So this is where exercise comes in. This is where sleep uh, comes in. There's other lifestyle factors that are very supportive there. Yeah, 
So if you are living a fairly health, healthy lifestyle and you do still have a high cholesterol, it's maybe not as concerning as it would be if you were someone who's eating, eating a bunch of junk food, poor metabolic health, not exercising, smoking, having high blood pressure. I mean, these are all factors that should be part of the conversation instead of just doling out medications that lower LDL cholesterol. You know, and I think it should be a more nuanced conversation because there's very healthy people that do have high LDL cholesterol, but they're being scared by their doctor into taking a medication, even though they're doing all these other f things right. And again, we have, in my opinion, more questions than answers about whether or not this correlation with LDL cholesterol is linked with all-cause mortality. And again, you know, this study, and they highlight five related recently published studies highlighting that this topic is actually much more complicated than is being presented uh, to the public, you know, with regards to cholesterol. Because if you go to WebMD or Medscape or any of the other publications that frontline health professionals are reading and, and using as their clinical sort of uh, set of heuristics that they're following in the clinic, it's all about lower LDL cholesterol is better, you know, but when do we hear about blood pressure? When do we hear about hemoglobin A1C or like we've been talking about relationship status or even dietary fat, you know? So I just think that we need to start doing a little bit of unlearning and asking more detailed questions. You know, why is it that in asthmatic patients specifically and also non-asthmatic patients, higher LDL cholesterol levels were linked with lower odds of dying over the course of a five-year study? You know, if in fact LDL is the sine qua non of cardiovascular disease and, and mortality, shouldn't we see the opposite? But we, we don't. And, and again, these in studies, in epidemiological studies in particular, they put people in related buckets. So in this study, they put people in what's called tertials or buckets based upon their ranges of cholesterol levels. And when you compare the highest LDL cholesterol level group, the tertial, tertial three compared to tertial one, the probability in the reduction of death was a 30% differential, meaning that people that had higher LDL cholesterol levels were 30% less likely to die over the duration of the study compared to people who had lower LDL cholesterol levels. So again, and this is the p-values 0.001, meaning that it's very statistically significant. So in conclusion, Another study raises more questions than it offers answers with regards to the relationship between LDL cholesterol levels and death. And I think this is worthy of, of you know, exploring, talking more about. I will put the reference in the description below. Uh, very grateful that you all tuned in. Hopefully you found this video helpful. If you did, please hit that like button. And for related tools that can help support your metabolic health, I will put that in the description below over at myoscience.com. Berberine is a great way to support your metabolic health and to kick those evening food cravings for things like sugar, cookies, crackers, ice cream, and sweets that will derail your health and your healthy lifestyle. So you can save with the code podcast over at myoscience.com and we'll catch you on a future video down the road.